What an absolutely gorgeous night for softball. Welcome inside the Sooner Softball Complex. Marita Hines Field. It's the number one ranked Oklahoma Sooners in their first midweek game, true midweek game of the season, squaring off against the UTA Mavericks. And the play-by-play -play is coming your way live on Sooner Sports TV. Well, hi again, everyone. Welcome inside the broadcast booth along with Aaron Miller. I'm Chris Plank, two-time national champion, Big 12 player of the year, Aaron Miller. And these numbers have got to impress you from this Oklahoma Sooner softball team. Without a doubt, one of the best offenses in the nation. 61 home runs, and you've got three of those athletes in the top four of the starting nine that carry 33 of those home runs. Explosive. That's, that seems good. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, riding a 31-game hitting streak in that midst is Jocelyn Allo, the freshman Nicole May will be called upon tonight in the circle for the Sooners, making her sixth start of the season. She's 5-0, and opponents hitting just 135 against her, and it's, it's depth that she provides, but man, she has a tough mindset. Not a lot rattles her. You had a chance to see her in the fall, Aaron. You were impressed with her? Yeah, Coach Gasso had a lot to say about Miss May, uh, talking just about the consistency in the circle and what was to come for this athlete, and we've seen her carry a lot of innings, 22 so far with Five weeks into season. He has only allowed five earned runs. There's a good look at P.J. Brunn, who helped lead this UT Arlington team, UTA, to the NISE National Championship back in 2019. That is the college softball equivalent of the NIT. She's in her fourth season at UT Arlington. Three games over 500. Team, though, struggling this year, just 3-10. and 10. Here's a look at how... They'll line up against Nicole May and the number one ranked Oklahoma Sooners, including Jessica Carrion, who will be their leadoff hitter, the second baseman. She has the best average of the starters on this UTA Mavericks squad. 345 batting average. Team doesn't necessarily hit for a ton of power. They have just uh, seven home runs as a team so far this season. Actually, I, I should refresh that. They've got six home runs of the starters, but 12 as a team. First pitch, as we are underway, is in for a strike. I don't know that you could have better weather for softball, especially after we had snow and freezing temps just weeks ago. <laughs> That's still one of those things that honestly shocks me. There's still some pipe issues. Nice play on the punt attempt. Popped right to Johns. One away. Nicole May around 64 to 66 miles an hour on the gun. Has the rise spin right now. First couple of pitches around 65 to 66. So she's a little juiced up to start this game. And she's got a good defense behind her. We saw Jana Johns, the South Carolina transfer, make the play over third. Freshman T.R.A. Jennings. And I'm curious to get your take throughout the night, Aaron, on Taylor Snow, who's right. made the move from second to the outfield, now back to first. Coach Gassel loves having an athlete over first base. I think to your point, with with snow kind of moving around this diamond, you get a sense of the depth of this roster and just how deep it goes. The fact that Coach Gasso can stick any athlete pretty much anywhere on the field, especially with these young ones, too. You talk about Coleman playing dead center. 1-0 pitch is swung through for strike one to Jada Erickson, the left fielder. She's one of five of the nine starters in this lineup that have played in every single game so far for UTA this yep. season. 14th straight start, hitting 286. That wind is blowing straight out to center field. Tough play for Lions. Oh, what a job of the short hop two away. That's not easy, and Grace made it look routine. Two quick outs. We mentioned the wind is blowing out here. The Trails Golf Club in Norman. Trailsgolf.com brings you our weather report. And, yeah, you see the flags. It's blowing out of the south to southeast at 21 miles per hour. But, Aaron, you hit it on the head. We were all bundled up. Snow, ice, pipes busting, you name it. And tonight it's absolutely gorgeous, 70 degrees. And I don't know if we're out of the woods yet. I've heard a rumor. No. I've heard a rumor. No. That we might have some cold weather coming back. But I, I'm not going to, I don't want to speak it too much into existence. So. I mean, I, I can wear a hoodie, and I'd be fine with that. But I don't, I don't need that. No more snow. Arctic temperature. The old one pitch to Murphy just misses that outer edge. One ball, one strike for K.J. Murphy, the third baseman of a handful of seniors. 
in this UTA lineup. Nicole Mays about one or two miles an hour, a little bit more heat than we typically see from her so far. So I don't know if that's a good sign, but she's obviously fired up to get the start tonight, and she finds the strike zone. Yeah, what you'll notice with some pitchers is is coming out hot sometimes takes a little bit of settling in because with with May working east to west predominantly late breaking balls, you almost need a little bit less juice to get more break. So it's it's going to be more of a balance for her in the circle to find that sweet spot between speed and movement. Two balls, two strikes, scoreless game just underway. Nicole May looking for a three up, three down in. 25% capacity here at Marina Hines Field. That's going to stay fair. Johns makes the play down the line, throws across, inning over. Three up and three down with those Sooner bats coming to the plate. Oklahoma and UTA scoreless in a midweek showdown here on Sooner Sports TV. Starting lineups tonight brought to you by the OU College of Professional and Continuing Studies. Degrees on site, online, and on your schedule. And T.R.A. Jennings will lead things off. we got to be quick. She might send one into those left field bleachers if you're not paying attention as the first one is up and away. Probably one. one of the most talked about players so far. I would say especially through the last week or so. Um, just a freshman that's been absolutely lighting it up. Three home runs in one game last week. Just an absolute stud at the plate. And she steps into the leadoff position, which has only been since March 7th. She's seen three games in that starting leadoff spot. Coleman's actually been carrying the weight at the top of the lineup, but we're starting to see that change just a bit. That Jada actually hit two home runs when they put her in the nine hole. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. which is essentially another leadoff, right? So you can kind of see some of that strategy there. Just in, in placing people in this lineup, this is a, and I told you this, Chris, before the game, this is a very... Coach Gasso-esque move to put one of your hottest bats at the top of the order. And then, oh, by the way, you've got Jocelyn Allo on deck. Count has run to three balls and one strike to T.R.A. Jennings. UTA going tonight with Allie Gardner. This is her just second start of the season. 1-0 with a 5.55 ERA. Opponents hitting 235 against her. Ten walks to eight strikeouts, and she's bounced back from a 3-0 count to run it full to T.R.A. Jennings, three balls and two strikes. Looks like she's sitting just a notch below 60 miles an hour on the gun right now. Here's Gardner. Full count. Back to some patience at the plate a little bit for yeah. T.R.A. Jennings. Looks to be like a couple off-speed pitches there, and it, it could honestly be a fastball that's perceiving just a little bit slower than this team is normally seeing. These are adjustments that are going to have to be made quickly through the first part of this order. That's the role of this leadoff. Seeing as many pitches as possible, relaying that info to the rest of the lineup. Bouncer to short. Uh, they're not going to get Jennings on that. She beats it out. A little bobble is just enough for Jennings to beat it out by the shortstop Evans. And speaking of that bobble, Evans has been one of their more consistent defenders, Emily Evans over at short. We mentioned Murphy, K.J. Murphy, their senior over third. They've got an athletic outfield behind guard. We'll see if the Sooners' offense is able to keep him busy. What more can you say about the start of the season for Jocelyn Allo, who digs in? On a mission is what you have to say about it. This is a senior that I have even kept in close contact with through her career. It's really locked in this year. I think of an athlete right now that's in that upper echelon of mindset, physical capacity, fitness. Um, she just knows the ropes, and you're, you're seeing her take advantage of that right now. No balls and a strike with Jennings aboard. Alo riding a 31-game hitting streak. She pops this one deep to right field at the track, at the wall, making 32 straight. Jossie goes yard in her first at bat, and just like that, the Sooners are on top, 2-0. That takes the drama out of waiting to the last at bat for the hitting streak. <laughs> she had done that three times during this run. Take a look here where that, pitch, where that pitch is located. You're talking about low outside. She absolutely throws the barrel. Apo taco. <laughs> Going with the wind, I mean, it's, it's a no-doubter. This, this is the type of control and force 
that this offense has. Home runs this season are brought to you by Whataburger, now available for a curbside. Apo Taquito, how's that? <laughs> I love that. At Whataburger is... Grace Lyons digs in, and the first pitch is a little bit up. So for, for Jossie on the season, that would be home run number 14 through the first 18 games yes, of the season. Yes, you took it right out of my mouth. Oh my That's God. exactly what I was going to say, the consistency. <laughs> And the part about this, the strategy behind placing her in this lineup, you've got Tiara Jennings in the leadoff spot, and then you've got Alo in the two-hole. What do you do as a pitching staff? How right. do you approach that at the top of this game? Do you walk them? Do you put them on base? Do you set them up for the three and four hole? It's hard to attack this style of offense when you've got your power at the top. The 0-2 pitch is up high for a ball. You think back to past years, which you've called quite a bit in my games. Think back to the Lauren Chamberlain days, chasing a home run record. You've got her starting off game. That's you've right. Got She's her a leadoff lead hitter. Spot. Yeah. <laughs> that way you can't walk her. Or at least we thought you could. Ground ball back up the middle. Base hit for Grace Lyons. And the Sooner offensive attack, attack is picking up right where it left off against Sam Houston when they put 17 on the board on Sunday night. Easily done. Again, not a bad pitch in the circle. That one's curveball in the outer half. She's able to throw the barrel at it, hit it right up the middle of the field. Doesn't try and do too much, which you will see a lot of girls, after a home run is hit, they'll step into that box and just take an absolute hack. But that's not the approach that Grace Lyons took. Knows her role is just to pepper something through the infield, find her way on, pass the bat to Kinsey Hansen. Who digs in the Sooner DP tonight? Her and... Lindsey Elam have been swapping out between DP and catching. Kinsey hasn't seen as much time at first base this season as she saw last year. She takes the 0-1 pitch a little low and in. One ball, one strike. Lions aboard. Sooner is already on top 2-0 on a two-run home run by Jocelyn Allo. Just to put it in perspective, the top four of this lineup, you've got Jennings with 11 home runs. Alo with now 14, Grace Lyons with 8, and now you have Kinsey Hansen with 9 home runs on the season. Make it 10. That ball is long <laughs> gone to right field from Kinsey Hansen. Oh, baby, what a blast over the right field wall. A no-doubter from Hansen. And just like that, it's 4-zip. <laughs> Calm, cool, collected. <laughs> She just ripped that one over the right field wall. Right on cue. It was nine, but make it ten. Again, opposite side of the field. What you're seeing here, Chris, is timing. You're seeing an offense that's waiting for this pitch to travel deep. They identify early in this inning that the pitching is a little bit slower. The perception is off speed. So instead of overpowering that swing to pull the ball, they see it deep and take it where the ball's thrown. That ball... Went 224 feet over the right field wall, left the bat of Kinsey Hansen at 65.6 miles per hour. And you were mentioning the speed. It was on a changeup that was in the 50 mile an hour range. So it's patience, and they showed it there. 4 0 Sooners. Wow. That is elite hitting, is being able to identify early what you're seeing and not waste any pitches or swings, attacking the game plan knowing and anticipating what you might see in certain counts and absolutely obliterating. Kenzie Hansen, an amazing job. Here's Taylor Snow, Sooner first baseman, Auburn transfer. First pitch is popped foul down the left side. 4-0 Sooners on four hits. We're still in the bottom of the first inning, and there's nobody out. Buckle in, offensive <laughs> softball fans. This could be a fun one tonight. Here's the 0-1. A little up ahead. Kaylin Snow, of course, started her career at Auburn. Transferred here last season. Was the Sooner opening day starting second baseman. COVID shut the season short. She battled a few injuries, but was just getting healthy when the season was shut down. Here's the 1-1. Hit her. I don't know why I feel the need to remind people of this. 
but you don't have to try to get out of the way in softball. No. As long as it's not a strike well, and you lean into it. I was about to say, <laughs> let's preface that if you're in your territory in right. the box, you can see she's she's very well within those white lines. You can stand your ground. As long as no body part is hanging over those white lines, it's your territory to own. That's why you see kind of the elbow guard. Sometimes you'll see it on the ankle. First pitch to Jada Coleman is called a strike. You wore one up your arm, right? I did. Did you wear yeah, one on, on your ankle, too? Nope. I just wore one on the elbow. And I will tell you, it'll take some of the sting off, but it still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jada Coleman's coming off a nice weekend for the Sooners. You know, one pitch is a little up. One ball, one strike. So, Jada Coleman was an athlete that I was a part of recruiting. I was actually a senior when Jada was being recruited by Coach Gasso, and I distinctly remember conversations that I had with Coach about how stellar, how much of a stud this lefty shortstop was. And to me at the time, I'm like, lefty shortstop? What? Never heard of such thing. Well, this girl was the real dang deal. She is that good. And you guys are getting a sense. I mean, starting lineup as a freshman, she is holding her own. The few times we've seen her at short, too, she's been impressive. Runner, go. Snow got a great jump. That's a heck of a throw from Weidman, uh, Weidman behind the plate. But Snow beats it. So it's been a Sooner team that hasn't been afraid to snag a bag or two. And for Jalen Snow, she's three for three on stolen base opportunities this season. Really good jump. Efficient off of the bag at first base. Good slide on the outside part of second. Yeah, Jada Coleman, Gatorade Player of the Year last year. Just an absolute stud. Liner, left center field. It's going to score Snow. 5-0 Sooners, two home runs, and a line drive RBI single from Jada Coleman. Chalk up for Coleman on the season. RBI number 17 already. Wasting no time. Look at this approach. Up and out. That ball is not even close to the strike zone, but Jada Coleman attacks. Tomahawk swing opposite side of the field. And again, seeing... Every single one of these hitters approach the plate correctly, seeing the ball deep, not trying to overswing, just taking what they can get. Here's Jana Johns. She swings and pops the first pitch she sees fouling out of play. Just updating one note, looking back on Jocelyn Allo's home run. You mentioned that it was home run number 14 on the season, number 68 in her career. She is in second all by her lonesome in Sooner softball history. This might be the first out of the game. Infield pop-up. Carrion's under it, makes a catch, and there's one away. I think that's a good point. You talk about someone who's on a mission, referring to Alo. She technically is in the running, chasing Lauren Chamberlain with an NCAA record of 95 career home runs. Because on paper, it says that Jossie is a senior, but in fact, she has one more season here at OU. She has another year to chase that record of 95 home runs. 30 of those came her freshman season. For both, well, uh, Lowe's 30 was in her freshman season too, right? Oh, there goes Coleman. She's really good at stealing bases, and she's going to get a second one. It's that throw gets away. Credit Jada Coleman with her seventh stolen base of the season. She's seven for eight. She advances to third on the wild throw. Regardless, both Lowe and Alo have had 30 home run seasons. It's incredible. Such a good jump. When you see Jada run, she just takes up space. Every single stride is okay. just like a deer. Thank you. Thank you. You finally described it how I have not been able to describe yeah. it. I talk about these long strides. She Huge. takes up space. She takes up space. <laughs> what about four stride lengths, base to base? There's a pop-up off the bat of Lindsey Elam with one out, and that's caught. Oh, nice play in foul territory by Carrion. Coleman tags and scores. There's that speed. And just like that, it's 6-0 Sooners. Although an out was recorded there, I've got to take note of the base running of Jada Coleman at third base. Because in my humble opinion, the one thing in our sport that is under coach, but not by Coach Gasso, is base running. Because you can win ball games if you run bases with some IQ. And you see it there. A ball that's caught out of bounds, an amazing catch by Kari on its second base in foul territory, but Jada Coleman finds her way home. Two away for Nicole Mendez. 
Mindy had a bit of a rough weekend. She was 1 for 11. But solid as she consistently is in the field. She takes the 1-0 pitch for a strike. One ball, one strike. Mindy has probably hit throughout her career in just about every spot in the lineup. Yes, you're correct about that. <laughs> 17, she was the leadoff hitter throughout a majority of the season. This year, I think she's been in just about every slot. She swings through the 1-1, one -one, a ball and two strikes. I don't mind her in this nine hole, though. I like... She's I like scrappy. having her to restart yeah, the lineup. She's, yeah. she's a fighter at the plate. This is, I've known Mindy, obviously, for years, and this is an athlete that's been through so much. You know, a super senior coming back after a COVID season has battled some knee injuries. She was a freshman of the year, her freshman year here at OU, NCAA freshman of the year, and has battled. I mean, she really, she struggled at some points, but she's such a strong athlete. Mentally, physically, she is a competitor. She's behind here, a ball and two strikes. With the leadoff hitter, T.R.A. Jennings, waiting on deck. Hot shot, right side, nice play by Carrion, makes the play and ends the inning. And Jocelyn Allo did it again. Extend the hitting streak. Her home run number 14 on the season. Oklahoma on top, 6-0 to zero after one on Sooner Sports TV, presented by Bud Light. <laughs> Arm-waving inflatable yeah, two-man. You nailed it. That was it. He's getting his work out today. The wind is blowing out. The Sooners are up 6-0 as we head to the top of the second inning. And the first pitch from Nicole Mage, the cleanup hitter, Eileen Garcia, is a little out for ball one. Oh, no, just misses. A Barely. Bit up. Yeah, I, I, I heard something interesting about a pitcher, and I think actually I was listening to, to P.J. Brun talking about UTAs when they had this week over North Texas, a nice midweek or weekend win for them. And it was learning to pitch with what the umpire is giving you. There's a high fly ball to left field, shallow left field. Johns is in trouble, and it falls. Gianna raced out from that third base spot. Grace Lyons couldn't get there quick enough, and... I don't know if Jossie ever had a really good beat on it. And that's one of those where it's, it teeters between no man's land and maybe a little bit of lack of communication. I think if Alo just kicks it into fifth gear, that, that ball probably should have been caught. Uh, that, that comes down to just communication, of knowing where you, who is taking the momentum to that catch, and that, that definitely is Jocelyn's ball. 6-0 Sooners, first base runner. For UTA here in the top of the second. And what a play by Jana Johns. Picks the line drive, throws it to first, ring him up, double play. Just like that, there's two away. She made that look easy. Can of corn. Catch and throw. That's just about it for Jana Johns at third base. Defense, especially that infield, is the bread and butter of this Sooner team. Coach Gasso takes pride in her infield, and you see why. Two outs for Reagan Hugel, the center fielder. Popped up, shallow left field, could be trouble. It falls again, right in front of Alo. You make a good point, though, talking about strike zone. Um, we actually, with ESPN, we actually had a really amazing Zoom call with NCAA rule books, and we had some umpires, UOs come on, and they talked about some of the focuses this coming season with umpires, especially behind the plate, mm -hmm. giving strikes to pitchers that barely clip the strike zone. Because if you break down the textbook definition of a strike, it's any part of the softball that touches the white of the plate. And when you, when you break it down like in that detail, you go, okay, it's not half of the softball. It's not a certain portion of the softball. It's any part of the softball that touches that strike zone. So you're right in that we've got to, pitchers have to figure out what they're going to be given because, especially with an offense like OU, you can't afford to leave the ball over the plate in any sense of the word. Kennedy Hines here behind two balls and no strikes with two outs in the top of the second. Sooners up 6-0. Pop foul out of play. With that in mind, let's get your Riverwind keys to the game, Aaron Miller. Riverwind still the one. And Young pitchers might see more than one tonight. Yes. I mean, Nicole May carrying over 25 innings, 24 innings now. Uh, but you do have some young arms on this squad. 
And I think especially matchups like this where they get ahead early, they're going to want to see those arms in the circle. You've got Olivia Reigns only carrying 10 innings so far on the season. Same with Macy McAdoo trying to figure some things out. She's carrying a 2.6 ERA. She needs to get more looks in the circle. Oh, Mays falling behind here. Three balls and one strike. The freshman rocks and fires. Popped up. Shallow left field again. Alo's got a beat on it. Makes the play and ends the inning. Couple of hits, but that's it. We head to the second. Back to the top of the lineup as we start the bottom of the second inning. Oklahoma in control, leading 6-0 after first inning home runs from Jocelyn Allo and Kinsey Hansen. And a new pitcher for the UTA Mavericks. Tell you more about Kennedy Hines after this first pitch, which is in for a strike. This is her 10th appearance on the season, a 10.03 ERA, just 1-5. and five. Opponents hitting 302 against her. 22 walks on the season to 11 strikeouts. The 0-1, low and in. in. In talking about the game plan for tonight for the Oklahoma Sooners, there was the preparation to see as many as four pitchers tonight for mm -hmm. the Sooners. Well, Only one pitch is low and in. You saw one through nine face pitcher one. Gardner in the circle in inning one, and how those adjustments and, and that information is relayed from the top of the lineup with Tiare Jennings seeing the ball deep. There's a hard hit ball in deep to right center field and gone. Wake up in those right field bleachers, Tiare Jennings, Sydney one right in your lap. Oh my, Tiare, continue the hard, uh, hot start to the season. Home run number 12 for the freshman. And the Sooners are rolling, putting this game just on the cusp of run rule territory. It's 7 0. Three home runs hit so far through the second inning, and every single one to the opposite side of this field. High IQ hitting, gamesmanship at the plate shows timing control. Not over swinging, not trying to pull the ball, but hitting the ball where it's thrown. This is why OU's offense is so deadly. Whataburger brings you our home runs in 2021. And they're getting their money's worth so far from this Sooner softball team as Jocelyn Allo homered in the first inning. And she takes the first pitch up and away. So Jossie has already extended her hitting streak tonight to 32 straight games. And we mentioned the home run was the 68th of her career as the 1-0 pitch is in for a strike. The two runs she drove in put her at 190 RBI-wise for her career, which ties her for seventh in Oklahoma Sooner history with one of the greatest catchers to ever don the... Oh, there's a shot foul. That actually bounced off the locker room and almost ricocheted back to the bullpen. One of the greatest catchers in Sooner softball history, Ashley Barrett. She's tied at number seven with 190 career RBIs. Let's, let's see if she can pass Ashley here with one swing of the bat. Going to go out on a limb, say it might happen at some point this season. How about now? Oh, my goodness! That got over the scoreboard! <laughs> it hit the scoreboard! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Jocelyn Allo! An absolute moonshot. Her second home run of the game, and it's 8-0 Sooners. I thought it was getting over. No doubter. I thought it was getting over the scoreboard. We got to watch it again. I think it hit off the OU yeah. above the national championship banner on that scoreboard. This ball's elevated, too. Oh, my gosh. It's letter high. I mean, she absolutely mashes this ball upper half of the strike zone. When you take a down angle hack like that, you are guaranteed to launch a rise ball out of the yard. I, I mean, think, way well, gone. Hit? Yep. Yeah, right? Just on the national yep. championship banner on top of the scoreboard. Oh, Jossie, power up. Back-to-back -back homers. I mean, that is the top of this order. You've got Jennings and Allo, one and two. What do you do as a pitcher in the circle? What do you do? How do you approach that, that lineup? So powerful. 
Here's the 1-0, -oh, and that's outside. <laughs> that was registered at 256 feet, and it hit the top of the scoreboard to wow. slow it down. <laughs> Unbelievable. Easily would have been in the band field outside 70, of the park. 75 miles an hour off the bat, and Lions is ahead on the count here. Three balls and no strikes. By the way, kudos, Grant Wade, our producer. I don't know whose camera that was that followed it to the scoreboard, but great job, guys. Great job. Here's another base hit for Grace Lyons up the middle. She's two for two. Good job, Baylor. Not to be confused with Baylor Boyd, who is a, an integral part of this Oklahoma Sooner softball squad. That was some incredible camera work, guys. So good. Grace Lyons finding her way up the middle. By the way, another multiple hit for, uh, game for Grace Lyons. Yes. The 21st of her career, her ninth already this season. And here's Kinsey Hansen. i got to go back to that all of home run just one more time. Go ahead. Because I see, we talk so much about Jocelyn chasing this home run record of Lauren Chamberlain's. And I've got to make some similarities here because, you know, I played with Lauren. She's my best friend. I've seen her swing thousands and thousands of times. And when I watch Jocelyn hit, the glaring similarities and the reason I think Lauren Chamberlain was so good is that she could hit bad pitching well. And when you see the pitch that Jocelyn Alo just sent out of the yard. A little bobble, bobble on the bouncer to short by Evans. That ball was at her shoulders, you know. So I, I see that similarity in Jocelyn, that she can hit pitches out of the yard that are far out of the textbook strike zone. That's what makes her so deadly. That's why she's chasing the home run record right now. And she's refocused herself. I, I, I had a chance to talk to Jossie on the Sooner Sports Podcast a couple weeks ago. By the way, that is ruled an error. It's the second error on UTA. So a board is Hanson at first. Lions is at second. And the first pitch is a strike to Kaylin Snow. I had a chance to have Jocelyn Allo on the Sooner Sports Podcast uh, a couple weeks ago, and it's available right now in the archives at Soonersports.com slash podcast, and she kept using the word locked in. Yes. I mean, she used it probably six times. So she's ready for this year, and it's showing. Well, and when you think about the power and the numbers that, that Jocelyn has, she's not going to see a lot of good strikes. So with that type of power, you have to learn how to hit pitches out of the strike zone. That's what makes her so deadly. Bouncer to the right side. Nice play by Carrion. They'll get snow at first, but Lions and Hanson advance, and there's one away in the bottom of the second inning. Here's Jada Coleman. Coleman was on base in the second, uh, first inning. Yeah, everything was running together and scored on a what was a routine ground uh, pop out in foul territory after singling, stealing second, and advancing to third on the throw. Here's the first pitch to the Colony Texas product, which is low for a ball. Coleman singled back in the first. This is a lefty with a lot of speed. We saw her grab a couple of bases back in the first inning. Just a multifaceted athlete at the plate. She's got the ability to have short games. She's got gap-to-gap -gap power, home run power. You mentioned she, those long legs, those yes. long strides, able to take up space. She gets down the first baseline in a hurry. She always low three. Now, and the thing that we've noticed in a lot of ways what she can do with the plate, and this might not be a great comparison, but she reminds me a lot of Nicole Pinley because she can do yes. everything. She can hit for power. She can lay down a bunch. She can slap if it's necessary. She is an incredible athlete. 3-0. All strike on the outside corner. Sooners as a team have already hit four home runs, two each inning. Off speed just four. outside of the strike zone. Here's something you'll appreciate as a former leadoff hitter yourself, and knowing that Jade is hitting sixth tonight, but spent a lot of time in that leadoff role, 17th walk this season. Leads the team for Jada Coleman. It is underappreciated, I can tell you that. Base on balls is just as good as a base hit. Finding your way on base is so crucial. 
especially with this type of offense, right? You know the ball's going to be put in play. So finding your way on, you, you're bound to get something started. Jana Johns popped out to the second baseman, Carrion, in foul territory, but did get an RBI thanks to the speed of Jada Coleman in the first inning. On the season now for Johns, she has 14 RBIs. Here's the 1-0. Uh, fouling out of play. This morning, I was talking with the voice of the Sooners, Toby Rowland, and he was joking about how the baseball broadcast will have a, like an update I'll send him after the first game. And he says, and then I'll get ready to update the score of the second game, and I see it's just underway, and I look, and it's like 7-0 already. <laughs> like, well, Toby, you're going to appreciate this tonight. Just underway, it's 8-0 Sooners in the bottom of the second inning. The 1-1 is a nice pitch in for a strike. Of course, OU basketball getting ready tonight to take on Iowa State in the Big 12 tournament. They spaced things out nicely, so hopefully we'll be able to watch and listen to all of that with the 8.30 tip this evening. Sooners safely in the big dance, but always like to get a win to kind of increase that seating. On two, how tough is it, if that ball's low, to wait like Jana Johns and the Sooner hitting crew is having to wait tonight on these off speeds and this little lower speed than they're used to. Well, I definitely think this is something that was in a game plan. This is something that was likely worked on in practice earlier this week to prepare for this matchup. That one hits her right on the elbow. Mm. So, a base is loaded, hit by pitch. Jana Johns, a couple of RBIs tonight without a hit. Not bad. Do That's what you gotta scores. do. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, to your point, Chris, this this is what elite offenses are able to do. Any style of pitcher, in any circumstance, with any type of adversity, finding a way to execute. First I mean, pitch to Elam is up and away. Think of all the things that have happened just in the past year. Now, I mean, outside of just facing pitching, you've got limited capacity in your home stadium. You've got COVID protocol every single week. You've got a much larger lineup, much larger roster. This one popped right behind second base for an out. Good play by carry on ranging back. There Good point, there's a lot of things working against so, him. So many things that this squad has had to rise above. And I don't know that it's getting talked about enough. These athletes are Warriors. I mean, the things that they have had to go through in order to get on this dirt, uh, they're not going to let anything take this opportunity for, away from them. Mendez with the bases loaded takes the first pitch low and away. And I hate to keep going back, and I'm sure our producer Grant Wade is going to make fun of me, but on that podcast interview, this is my promotion for the Sooner Sports Podcast to go subscribe. That's one thing that Jocelyn said is, I don't want to lose my spot to a freshman, that's right. for sure, or anyone else. Well, in that, um, you know, I got to actually, speaking of podcasts, I got to listen to an interview that Coach Gasso did with our ESPN podcast, Seven Innings podcast, and she talks about the behind-the-scenes battles that the public eye really doesn't know about. And I relate so much to that because I, I know what those battles feel like as an athlete. Every day at practice, this one is crushed, hard hit, infield, single through second base, two-run score. Jada Coleman showing the speed. Thought they might have an angle on her, but... Mindy finally busting through the infield. I know that that had to feel good. She has struggled at the plate just a bit lately, but this one busts right through the 3-4 hole. Just enough to snag herself a couple of RBIs. And just like that, it's 11-0 Sooners. But your, your point is dead on. I mean, you don't want to do anything as we may have a pitching change here. The first time, well, we're in the second inning. I can't say the first time tonight the Sooners are batted around. That's so unfair. <laughs> but your point is the competition yeah. never stops. And a, a phrase that's used a lot is iron sharpens iron. It that's is. what you see in practice. There is something that makes Coach Gasso special and something that I will always admire her for is that she is able to maintain the team atmosphere while creating a highly, highly competitive environment on an internal level. 
there are battles that you all don't witness on a public scale every single day on this diamond. There are tough battles happening for every single position, but it's never toxic, right? She always is able to keep that team atmosphere because, as you said, iron does sharpen iron, and that is why this team is so deadly. You think about it as T.R.A. Jennings, who led off this sitting with a home run, bats with one runners at second and third and two outs. It's 11-0 Sooners. The 2019 Big 12 Freshman of the Year is currently coming off the bench in gray screen. Riley Boone was the everyday center fielder to start the season last year. She's coming off the bench. I mean, it, you look at the, the pitching staff and the depth. They've got seven pitchers. It's... It's pretty impressive what this team has from a depth perspective. McKenzie Donahue, who Donahue's off to a great start this season. So, yeah, it's, it's nonstop competition for this team beyond game day. 1-0 pitch misses low and 2-0. And uh, I love that you hit, uh, hit that on the head. There's things that we don't know, we don't see, and none of it is caustic. None of it is backstabbing. Everything is about the team. Yes, it is. Which is tough. I mean, easier said than done. That as a program to maintain that type of morale is tough. There's another one. Look out, Kenny Mossman. A bomb over the right center field wall from Kiore Jennings. Make it a two-home run night. A two-home run inning from the freshman Kiore Jennings as she lines one. A laser over the right field wall. And Oklahoma is rolling here on a Wednesday night in Norman. Add the extra point, it's 14-0 Sooners. Might I add, opposite field, sees the ball deep, hits it where it's thrown. That is upper level offense right there. Is that Kenny out there in right there? I think it might be right in the party patio. Let's see if Jossie's got one more in her this inning. Home runs this season brought to you by Whataburger. We've mentioned it so much, I think it's going to be my stop on the way home. All I can do is think about a double meat with cheese. <laughs> this game goes long enough, maybe a bacon, egg, and cheese taquito. Honey butter chicken biscuit, you can't go wrong. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> the 1-0 is up high for a ball to Jossie. Two balls and no strikes. Alos two for two with two home runs. Not a bad start to the game. Three RBIs. She's moving it into seventh on the all-time RBI list in Oklahoma Sooner softball history. Pops this one back behind home plate. Might be a play, and there is. Weidman makes it and ends the inning. Sooner sent 11 batters to the plate. And T.R.A. Jennings homers not once, but twice. A line shot, and Oklahoma's in control, leading 14-0 on Sooner Sports TV. Brought to you tonight by Bud Light. Cole May goes back to work with just a little run support. The first pitch is in for strike. Wait a minute. Who's that I see behind home plate? I don't. I never noticed how... Uh, uh, just right there, the Aaron Miller yeah. cutout was. We've got quite a few pretty stellar alumni. Look at that. Look at you. Oh, the young cup. <laughs> was that from your senior years? The 0-1 uh, pitch was ripped. Foul may got that one up a little bit. Junior or senior, I think. Okay. Yeah. The cardboard cutout strategically placed behind home plate as Aaron, uh, Emily Evans digs in. She's had a rough start to her season, but as you could see on her... Oh, one swing, put it in her eyes, and she can rip it. No two in the dirt. Page back there. A low chamberlain, they put her right where usually the radio, we would get to hang out. So, let's see what you did there, Coach. <laughs> Six runs in the first, eight runs in the second. 14-0 Sooners. Here's the 0-2 by May. Swing and a miss. She pulled the string on an off-speed one out. First strikeout for Meg. Perfectly placed off-speed pitch right at the knees. Just falls right off the table. Do not know the, if you could spot it better than that. For something that is pulled back on that radar. And as you mentioned, Chris, starting off this game, hot. Hot she, speed. She was a little above her normal MPH miles per hour. I try to sound cool by saying MPH. What I can't say miles per hour. She was <laughs> she was two to three miles an hour faster than she typically is. A little bit more juice, but she's righted herself well. Zamper Langston digs in and fouls the first pitch off. We haven't seen a lot 
of those off-speed pitches later in the count. So it's nice to see May kind of settle in to some of those strikeout pitches later in this game. The 0-1 is just a little off the plate. And I got to make note, because I know we've been talking so much about offense, but let it be known that when you have an offense that is as powerful as this Sooner team, the freedom that you feel in the circle as a pitching staff, unmatched. Unmatched. You can go for it. There is no pressure. You can pitch. You can settle into your flow and into your niche because you've got the freedom if you can give up a home. You, you can allow yourself to just go for it. That off speed she just threw to Amber Langston was pretty sick. Let's see if she goes back to it on the one, two. No, a little rise. Two balls, two strikes. <laughs> Someone asked if the, Jess, uh, if the Jocelyn Allo, Jessica Cootie just asked if the Jocelyn Allo homer could have landed in the football stadium if it would have went to right field. Uh, <laughs> telling you what. It that was shot was big, the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss on that off-speed. Nicole May, your filth is incredible tonight. Two-way, second straight strikeout. So, so good. And I know that pitch has to make Jen Rocha super happy. And that's a pitch, mark my words, mm -hmm. that's going to be very integral later in the season. And it's in, in games like this that, again, you fine-tune those pitches in late counts. We will likely see a pitching change here, and indeed we will. The friendly face of Macy McAdoo getting an opportunity to come in mid-inning, five and a third innings this year. The total product has struggled a little bit with her control. Eight walks, she's hit a couple of batters as well. First pitch is low and away. The key here, as far as stuff is concerned for Macy McAdoo, she's as good as it gets. It's just, can she consistently find the strike zone? Which, when she does, she is dangerous. 1-0. Good pitch. In for strike 1-1. One 2.62 one. ERA. This is her seventh appearance of the season. She did have a start in five and... Well, you consider it sixth appearance. She's only thrown five and a third this year. And those walks have been the big issue. Eight so far on the season. In comparison to Nicole May, who started this game 20... Five innings now thrown with six walks on the season. So think about that ratio of just opportunities in the circle. Got to, got to find the strike zone just a little bit earlier. One ball, two strikes. McAdoo brings it home. A little up. You're not going to... I am just... You know, everyone talks about it. objectivity. I am just the biggest Macy McAdoo fan because she has a great spirit about her. She's got a great attitude, and she's got filthy stuff. It's just, can she consistently find the strike zone? The 2-2. Two -two. That was good. It's fouled off. I got to see Macy throw quite a bit this offseason. I got to call a couple, couple inter-squad games, and you said it. I mean, she's a competitor. She, she might be struggling here early just to find that strike zone, but there's a reason why you're seeing her in the circle right now. Coach Gasso and Jen Rocha know the type of arm that this kid has, and they want to see her find that groove. 2-2 two -two misses up and in. 3-2 and... You bring her in in a low-stress situation. It's 14-0 to right now. We're only in the top of the third inning. There's two outs. Get it out. Get that positive momentum going into the next inning. McAdoo, by the way, hits the upper 60, 68 miles an hour on the gun right now. Look at the height. She's halfway to home plate striding off the mound. Oh, and she pulled the string on some fill. The off-speed caught her looking. Inning over. Macy McAdoo, you are unfair. First strike out of the inning, and it comes off the hand of McAdoo. The changeup trumps. We'll be back at the plate. More home runs to come. <laughs> at home this week, and that's a look at what's on tap for Sooner Athletics, presented by Ken K. Coach, the official motor coach carrier of Sooner Athletics. First pitch swinging for Lions, one away. She lined that one right at Murphy at third. We have a new pitcher. That's Lauren Henriksen, who is checked in for... UTA Mavericks out of the Sun Belt Conference. This is her sixth appearance. The third of what we expected of four pitchers we would see tonight. Henriksen, as far as overall stats are concerned, has the best ERA, a 3.68 ERA, but has only thrown seven and a third. 
She faces off against Kinsey Hansen, who's been on base both times and takes the first pitch for a strike. Hansen homered a two-run bomb in the first inning. For Kinsey, those were RBIs 24 and 25. And Kinsey reached on one of the two UTA errors in the second and scored. The 0-1. That's laced down the left field line in the corner. It's trouble. They're going to keep Kinsey at first because that ball was hit so hard. Erickson was able to get it back in quickly. And, Aaron, you spend a lot of time in the outfield here. You can get a pretty true hop off that left field wall. Yeah, Langston played this really well. To keep Hanson at first right there on a ball that hits the wall, very well played, really strong throw into second. 73 miles an hour off the bat from Hanson. She'll be pinned run for here. We going. Kinsey Kelso is going to pinch run. I, I know that Elam's behind the plate tonight, but we may see Kelso get the fourth and fifth inning here behind the plate for the Sooners as Lou Donahue, as coach calls her. McKinsey Donahue will pinch hit. Boy, she has been fantastic off the bench for the Sooners. First pitch to the Mustang product is a little bit high for a ball. Overall in the season for McKenzie Donahue, she's 11 for 22. She's started five games already this year and has hit, wait for it, three home runs. After not having one in her freshman season, the 1-0 pitch is in for strike, 1-1. One one. She's pinch hitting here for Taylon Snow. By the way, Riley Boone has moved into the on-deck circle. This is, again, that depth in the ESPN, ESPN, OU lineup. <laughs> well, there's depth in the ESPN lineup. There's a laced ball down the right field line. Oh, what a play by Langston. And there's two away. There is Riley Boone. Riley Boone came off the bench against Missouri, and I know there were big numbers put up Sunday night against Sam Houston. But she just... She puts the ball in play. Uh, JT Gasso this week said, McKenzie Donahue's superpower is she gets on base. Riley Boone's superpower is that she puts the ball in play. And she just laced one into left field. I know I've used that way to describe some of these shots tonight. And uh, a Wasso product ended up with a couple of hits this weekend. She's looked well. She looked great whenever she's been given the opportunity this year. Who hasn't? I love to see an Oklahoma native get their opportunity and crush. Because I know what that feels like. <laughs> and dang, it feels good to get in that box, especially on your home field. And just lay some power on the ball. Well, you know, Riley Boone is due a home run. It's the one thing she hasn't done yet in her career. No pressure here, Riley, as the 0-1 pitch is bounced foul. Speed bounced back from a, a knee injury last year. That catch she made in Mexico, crashing up against the fence, was one of the better defensive plays you'll see. And unfortunately, ended up costing her a portion of her early season. Quite a bit of it, to be exact, the 0-2, up and away. She's got speed. She'll put the ball in play. She'll force the defense to, to defend. Now, after all this buildup of putting the ball in play, she'll probably have a pitch out of the strike zone called strike three or something, knowing <laughs> my luck. Here's the one, two. Oh, she got under it. Pretty deep to right field, but not deep enough. Caught at the warning track by Langston, and the Sooners are held without a run in the bottom of the third. We head to the fourth. 14-0 Sooners as we play in the top of the fourth inning. Macy McAdoo back to work in the circle. Couple of quick defensive changes for the Sooners as Jaden Erickson steps to the plate. Oh, for one ground out to short her first time up. Missed the bun on the first attempt. T.R.A. Jennings has moved over to first for the Sooners, which means I think she's played every infield position this season so far. There's a good look at the freshman. And Mackenzie Donahue is in at second. Here's the 0-1. That's in for a strike. And out in center field now is Riley Boone, who is playing about as shallow as you could ever see a center fielder play. There's a good look at Riley after she 
got us all excited for that first career home run on the swing <laughs> that ended the bottom of the third inning. I had a woo. I, I was ready to go. Here's the 0-2. A little up for McAdoo. One ball, two strikes. I'm, I'm pretty sure now, T.R.A. Jennings, because she started at second. She played third whenever we were in Houston, and Jana Johns was out because of contact tracing. She has seen a couple of innings at short. As far as the positions in the infield outside of catcher, she's done it all. A little soft slap back to McAdoo. Good job, even though she hesitated with the ball in her glove to get the out. One away. Almost like she had a problem getting out of the glove, Aaron. She got the out. That's all that matters. <laughs> Quick work, though, by McAdoo in the circle. Love to see a pitcher Ooh. field their position, showing that athleticism. You know better than anyone. That is constantly worked on in oh. practice and in pregame with the pitchers yes. and the quick exchange and the bouncers. Well, especially short game because there's so much communication between corners and who's covering first and who's covering the bunt. Oh, change up for a strike. K.J. Murphy, the third baseman, grounded out to third in the first inning. So much more of that short game in this sport than you might see in baseball as the 0-1 pitch misses low ball and strike. Yeah. And not base, to compare everything back to baseball. In baseball, though, you hardly see a pitcher unless it's right at him. Mm -hmm. Make any effort off the mound. Softball, it's constant. Constant. All over the dime. 1-1. One, one. Wow. Nice off speed. One ball, two strikes. That's the Macy, though, that we know. That type of command in the zone. And that, that is the pitcher. That is the look and confidence that Coach Rocha has in Macy. That's why you're seeing her get this opportunity. The ERA... And the innings that she's carried so far, punches her out. Gets her on the fastball, up and away. The ERA does not reflect the type of power that Macy has in the circle. Take a look at where this is located. Just hammers it, breaks late, starts on the outer half, breaks in under the hand. We think about that as a hitter, to see two floaters right at the knees, and then boom, jams you with a hard ball. And Patty Gasso may have seen all she needs to see from Macy McAdoo. As Coach is chatting with tonight's home plate umpire. And oh, Kinsey Kelta is going to come in and catch. These two played together in high school. Did Macy and Kinsey. Oh, oh. No pitching change here. Just a new catcher. Rarely see that, but Kinsey Kelso uh, is as technically sound of a catcher as you're going to see. There's There are two studs that are in front of her right now in Lindsey Elam and Kinsey Hansen. But from handling a pitcher and a technical perspective, it doesn't get much better than Kinsey Kelso. And she just missed framing that ball. Barely. <laughs> The T.R.A. Jennings, two home runs tonight, by the way, which gets her on the season with a total of 13. There's a ball that's fouled away. Jocelyn Allo has hit two home runs tonight. She's at 15 home runs on the season. So T.R.A. has moved into second in the country, in the nation, in home runs this season as a freshman behind Jocelyn Allo. One ball, one strike. Just misses low, and thanks to our fave, Jessica Cootie, for that note. How about that? Not only do you have a t the team that's hitting the most home runs in the country, but you also have individually, and yes. I think you brought this up in the pregame show, Aaron Miller, number one and number two in the nation. Here's the 2-1. I, I know for sure that thinking 10 or more at-bats, 20 or more at-bats, to have three and you're starting nine that are hitting over 500. No one, for sure, based on the stats I've seen in the Pac-12, have done that. I'm not sure about SEC, but I know for sure in the Pac are not. 3-1 pitch is a strike. 14-0 Sooners. We're in the top of the fourth inning. 
Our buddy Richard Mart is back at Sooner Vision, reached out and said, we need to expand this run rule so we can see more Sooner softball. <laughs> I'm here for it. More <laughs> softball, man. Here's the 3-2. Another off-speed, slow roller to third. Did that stay fair to Anna Johns didn't quite get there in time. She still made the play. Fair. How close was this? I mean, you're talking inches. It definitely bounced fair and then spins out right there. Really good off the throw, though. It's one thing I've noticed about watching... Well, every suitor that we've seen play third base, they can throw for about any angle. The 3 2. Ooh, just misses. And Macy McAdoo has her first walk tonight. Every time I log on to social media, especially Twitter, the softball birds are singing <laughs> OU praises, especially the freshman in Jennings. I mean, she is the topic of conversation right now. And this was a name that we didn't hear much of preseason, other than straight for the mouth of Coach Gasso, who knows her players better than anybody else. But nobody else picked up on the talent that this freshman had. And now you're seeing her just absolutely erupt. And she's shown her versatility in the field as she's played every infield position so far this season. She's at first with two outs, the 0-1. Casey tried to go back to the off speed but hung it up high to Sophie Weidman. I mean, by the way, lined out to third her last time up. Might have been the hardest hit ball that the Mavericks have had all night long. Just two hits. 1-1. One, one. There's the third hit, and that's a laser to the right side. Nice play by Nicole Mendez, who slid and knocked it down. Tried to throw behind the runner at first, but I don't know if Jennings was ready for that. Really nice job by McAdoo to back it up. UTA has their third hit of the game. Right off the hand, she's able to hammer this through that 3-4 hole. UTA starting to string together some hard-hit balls. Two on, two out for the Mavericks. Showing some late-inning fight here against the Sooners. McAdoo getting tested. I think the coaching staff doesn't mind seeing her put in a tough spot, as long as she can get out of it, as Reagan Huckel digs in. Has one of those three UTA hits. Nice off-speed. Strike one. Sooners defensively, Johns at third, Lions at short, Donahue now in at second with Jennings at first and Kinsey Kelto behind the plate for McAdoo. With Boone at center, Mendez in right, and Jocelyn Allo in left. Runners at first and second. Whiteman at first, Garcia at second. Quickly, McAdoo jumps in front on this count, no balls and two strikes. See Boone in center just slightly shaded to right field. Fourteen zero Sooners. The pitch. Bounce to short. Nice job by Lions to charge. Any angle, she can throw a dart. Inning over. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Sooners in control, leading 14-0 on Sooner Sports TV, presented by Bud Light. Board brought to you by Air Comfort Solutions. Make the winning call today with Aaron Miller on Chris Plank. First pitch swinging by Janet Johns. Rounds to third, one away. Lindsey Elam is due up here, but Aaron... We're going to get our first look at Grace Green tonight. Who's had some pop. Oh. It was wild. Her first at bat this season, she went yard. I mean, that's, that's not a bad way to start the season, right? Eight home runs <laughs> on the year. Green's been fun to watch. She has battled and battled and battled. She's got a quad injury she's been dealing with. She had an elbow issue she's been dealing with. It's kind of been a tough one for her to start this season as the first pitch is low for a ball. But... I came by the facility yesterday. She's out stretching, doing what she can to make sure she's getting her body right. She is absolutely doing everything she can to get back to 100% as she takes the 1-0 low to him. Competition, right? Always fighting. I mean, just looking at this team, you see a strong fit. Uh, 
um, very focused team, especially at the plate. I mean, when I see Grace Green, I see strength. This is someone that's taken her fitness to another level, an athlete that I've seen grow up in this program now for a few years, and year after year, every time I see her at the plate, I see focus, I see strength. I just saw her swing 3-0. <laughs> Green light. That's confidence Specific, right there. Specifically, when I talk about strength, I think of, of off-season, and I think of the triathlon that this team does year after year. And I always have the pleasure of working that triathlon, and every year I see Grace Green. She's stronger. She thinks this one just fouled down the right field line. Just the size. I mean, tall, strong, takes an absolute hack. And although the numbers might not reflect her strength right. yet, it's there. She's, she takes the game very seriously. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that I've always dug about She's her. She's got in. Yeah. She, is, she is all in. Here's the 3-2 pitch to Green. Oh, swing and a miss. He got her at the plate, though. No need to go chasing down the line. And two outs for freshman Zeta Pooney. And we'll get her first at bat of the evening. Really nice pitch. Low in the zone. Drop ball that just breaks off the knees. Grace tries to go get that pitch. Zeta Pooney hit her first career home run on Sunday night against Sam Houston. And as far as... Those advanced metrics that we like to talk about, the exit speed, that means how hard she's hitting the ball, is among the best on this team, if not the best, for the true freshman. What kind of numbers are we talking? We're like, talking Alo-esque. So, she takes a first pitch for a ball. 90 plus? It's in that range. I'll, I've got a bevy of text messages to go back through to... Try to get as specific as I can here from her shot on Sunday night. The 1-0. Hard hit ball to short. Well done by Evans to stay down on it. And a quick 1-2-3 inning for the Sooners. Could be a run rule situation. Will be if the Sooners take care of business in the top of the fifth. Oklahoma up 14-0 on Sooner Sports TV. Presented by Bud Light. Sooners looking to improve to 18-0 on the season. And pick up... Macy McAdoo wants a different softball here. What would be their 14th run rule win of the season? That's pretty good. Just a little. 14 zip, 14 runs on 11 hits, five home runs for the Sooners tonight. Jocelyn Allo hits two. T.R.A. Jennings hits two. One from Kinsey Hanson. The 1 0. Hard hit ball to third. Nice job by Johns. One away. That now makes 38 home runs between Jennings, Allo, and Hanson. Those three athletes carrying over half of the home runs on their squad. That's pretty impressive. And it's I would be willing impressive. to see where that ranks amongst full teams across softball and to this face, year. To face both Jennings and Allo in the leadoff spot. Yeah, not easy. Boom, boom. Looks like we're going to see a pitching change here. Macy McAdoo looked very solid after checking in in the second inning, which means Olivia Reigns, the prior product, is getting the call. We'll tell you more about number seven. This loves travel stop pitching change after this. Macy McAdoo came off the bench, and whew, she had the off-speed work in Aaron Miller. I mean, pulling the string. Better as the innings went on. Low in the strike zone, perfectly placed. Really strong outing for Macy McAdoo. Olivia Reigns is the new Sooner pitcher. The sophomore from Pryor loves travel stops. Brings you these pitching changes. Clean places, friendly faces for Olivia. This is her eighth appearance on the season, and she's looked good. Ten innings, just five hits. Thirteen strikeouts to just two walks. The 0-1, a little up. They've had a couple of really strong performances in the shortened season last year early. I talk a lot about the combo of her and Macy on that road trip to Arizona last year as the 1-1 pitch misses low. She's back. 
battled through a couple of well, injury bugs to start this season, but has looked good in the 10 innings that she's pitched so far this season. See if she can continue it here with a 14-0 lead, the 2-1 out of the plate. So the numbers on the two pitchers so far for the Sooners, Nicole May, two and two-thirds, allows two hits, strikes out two. Macy McAdoo comes in with two outs in the third. She goes an inning in two-thirds and allows a hit, walks one, and strikes out two. Now Olivia Rings will be responsible for getting the final two outs while not allowing more than six runs to ensure the Sooner run rule win here. Rains is another Oklahoma native, prior Oklahoma. You think about it, um, Oklahoma product behind the plate, Oklahoma pit, uh, product in the circle, Oklahoma product at second, Oklahoma product in center, center field. field yeah. Love to see it. I'm a jinx girl myself. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Pitch. In the dirt. That was, uh, I, I didn't realize it until we were talking before the game, just how good that Aaron Miller-led senior season Jinx Trojan squad was. D1 talent good all times. over the place. Good times. Oh, my. Three balls, two strikes. Reigns brings it home. Off speed, Ooh. unfair, two away. Looking stealthy in the circle. The off speed. Out of three different arms now, May, McAdoo, Reigns pulling the string. This clearly has been an approach in late counts that Rocha has worked on with these arms. Madison Miller is going to get an opportunity to pinch it here for UTA. Speaking of Oklahoma natives, did you know that my freshman class back in 13, all seven of us were from Oklahoma? Now that's what I'm talking about. Yes. First pitch is laced into left field. I'll have thought about it, and she'll just use her body to knock it down. That might be the hardest hit ball of the night. Easily. Seven. Let me see how I can do here. Watch. It hard. So there was you, the Townsend twins, right? Yep. Man, she takes that one right off the hand. She shields her face with her hand there to block that. Look at the smile on Jocky's like, face. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who am I leaving out here? You, Katie the Self. Katie Self and Edmund North product. We had Whitney Ellis. That's right. Whitney Montgomery. We had... So, so we're missing two more, right? Leslie Miller. Oh, I forgot about Leslie. Yeah. For the longest time... I had always thought, wait, Miller, such an uncommon name. They have to be related. <laughs> Here's the first pitch to the leadoff hitter, Jessica Carrion, and it's a little low for a ball. So who am I leaving out with the seven? Do I have to go back and look at the 2000s? I, know, I, I need to pull it up. Who am I missing? Softball signing class. Google is an amazing Ah, uh, Taylor Dewberry. That's right. Who ended up having a very nice career. Yeah, very strong career. Here's the 0-1. How foul was that? An NSU for her or UCO where she ended up? Um, nope, that was, uh, was Jaden Chestnut, you're thinking. Oh, of. that's right. Yep. Every time things run together for me. Go ahead. Just low. That was a nice tag? throw. Is that ball game? Yes. Oh, she caught her at second base. The hand cannon from Kinsey Kelso ends it on the ball in the dirt. And Oklahoma wins again in run roll fashion. Look wow. at this strike. Cannon takes the ball off the chest. Laser to second base. Lions applies the tag. And that's it. 14 runs in four innings. Four what? and a half. What a tag wow. by Grace Lyons. And Oklahoma wins it by a final score of 14 to 0. It's time for the Bud Light postgame show. The Sooners improved to 18 and 0 on the season with its 14th run rule win of 2021 and knocking off UT Arlington tonight 14 to 11.